Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you about the latest from Evil Dead, United States of Anarchy, out October 30th on Steam Hammer. The album has 9 tracks, 35 minutes in length, and this is the band's third full-length studio album. It's been 19 years since they released the record, and this album is an absolute beast. I really feel like they picked up exactly where they left off. This is an album that has that old school street style thrash metal sound with hardcore and crossover elements that really allows it to be a little bit more robust, a little bit more thick as far as the volume is concerned, more driven, more gritty, and definitely more raw across all the different elements. This album absolutely rips from the beginning all the way to the end. Is that kind of a record that you blink and the album is done? That is the structure that it has and that is how fluid the album is. I was honestly not expecting anything else the moment that I started listening to it because this kind of record, this kind of style in a band that has this kind of approach doesn't really go outside the box. It doesn't really create a record that is very elaborate as far as the overall structure of the album is concerned. You really want to pack as much aggression, as much intensity across all the different elements of the record, either be the music, the lyrics, or how the vocals come across, and let the songs do the rest. Let them push the album forward. Let them just carry you over from track to track and never looking back. That's the kind of record you have here as far as the overall structure is concerned. Once you get into the sound, it is heavy, it is driven, and it has a serious thickness to the volume, to the overall sound that it carries track after track after track. And I really felt that that thickness of volume really came from the combination of three elements working very well together across all nine tracks, and that is the bass, the drums, and the guitars. I love the bass on this record. They used it, and they used it a lot, and it's really predominant in the mix. You can hear it in most of the songs, it really comes across, it allows to give some grooviness to the tracks, it allows to, to give the, the tracks this incredible foundation. Uh, it, it brings the songs down as far as the overall mood is concerned, and it packs a lot of substance into how the tracks musically are put together. It just gives this big aura, it gives this big vibe, it allows the overall sound, the overall volume to feel a lot bigger. Then you add the drums into the mix. The drums on this record, they have moments where they're absolutely brutal, very heavy, almost destructive, and then you have moments where the, where the drums fall back a little bit and they hide themselves with the bass behind how the guitars sound. But overall, I felt that the drums and bass started that foundation. They really paired up to give the album this robust bass line that allows everything else to be built upon. And the next element that gets packed upon it is the guitars. And the guitars also have that thickness of volume to it. The riffs really sound gritty, they really sound raw, but most of the time they're not very driven, they're not very thin in sound. They really pack a punch. So when you have three elements that are recorded in a very similar pattern, in a very similar way, it makes the overall sound of the record to feel very substantial. It really feels like this wall coming at you, approaching you fast and furious with every single track. It works really well for the construction of the album. It works really well for the overall soundscape that they had in mind for this record. And it has that old school feel to it. It has that, like I said, thrash metal street style sound to it. So if you don't record all three elements with this equivalent approach in terms of giving the overall sound an equal substance and an equal amount of volume, you lose a little bit of that old school vibe, that old school style that really works well for this record and for this band. And you start to feel like the album is becoming a little bit lighter and it's becoming something that it doesn't need to be. It needs to be this thick, it needs to be this robust, it needs to be this heavy, not just heavy as far as the guitar riffs or the drums, but heavy as far as the overall substance and the overall amount of sound that it carries within each and every single track. Then on top of that, you have the lyrics and you have the vocals. The lyrics are political and social. I was really expecting nothing else from this band and they delivered a, a social political commentary on the world around us, every single day life. Things that are happening uh, on, on our day-to-day -day lives that we're faced in the news, uh, in our own personal experience when we walk out on the street. So all of that, all of those experience are represented on the lyrics of this record on every single song. And I really felt that those lyrics added intensity and aggression to how the music, to how the sound came across on every track, almost like one was feeding off of the other and vice versa. Then on top of that, you have the vocals. And the vocals had a lot of grittiness. They had that old school, 
uh, approach to it as well, a little bit of hardcore, a little bit of crossover thrash style as far as the vocal delivery, the grittiness of the vocals, the tone, uh, and how they were recorded as well. They had a little bit of an old school style approach as far as the recording process is concerned. But once again, it's the perfect element. If you're gonna go with an album that has this throwback sound and you wanna pick up where the band left off 19 years ago, all these elements have to fall in place. Everything has to be the same as it was back then. Otherwise, the album would feel a little bit different and it's not gonna be what fans would expect from this band. So I like how the vocals came across. I like the greatness that they had. I like the power, the substance that they added and the perfect outlet for the political and social message that's integrated in the lyrics and the overall sound experience of the album. They really feel like they're coming at you with anger, with attitude, a lot of attitude in the vocals, a lot of attitude in the vocal delivery on every single song. Overall, I really like this album. I like the vibe that it has. I like the throwback aspect of this record. It really connected with me because I grew up listening to a lot of bands that had similar styles, similar sound, similar approach. A band like MOD, for example, that was the first thing that came to mind when I started listening to this record. So I really gravitated towards this album because it took me back to my youth. I love the intensity, I love the bravado that it has and the sound and the lyrics and the vocals. So overall is a very complete record that really transported me back in time to 20 years ago. As far as songs are concerned, let's start off with Napoleon Complex. I love this track. Great build up, moving fast and heavy. The drums add so much heaviness to this track. They add great foundation to how this track sounds. The chorus is a little bit more catchy, a little bit more hooky, and that makes the overall song a lot more memorable. It adds also a lot of energy into how the song feels and how it comes across. The solo is really magnetizing. I really like what they did with the guitar solo for this track because I didn't feel like it broke the track at all. I felt like it added actually something to the overall experience of how the track comes across. It added a little bit of intensity to the song, if you will. But the track closes off exactly with the same bravado that it started. So this is a song that comes absolutely full circle. Next, Without a Cause, heavy but not as driven as Napoleon Complex. It's still a heavy track, it just doesn't move at the same tempo, at the same speed as the previous track that I mentioned. This one moves a little bit more methodic and perhaps with being a little bit more methodic, it becomes a little bit heavier as well, or at least it has the sensation of being a little bit heavier. I like the backing vocals on this track. It adds a little bit of a hardcore street style feel to the way the song comes across. It'll work perfectly in a live setting because it'll allow the fans uh, and the band to interact with each other singing back and forth. So it's a song that has that kind of dynamic, that kind of approach, I think will fit perfectly into this track and into the live setting uh, aspect of the band once they're able to perform live. The guitar solo on this track is really interesting because it added some sobriety to how the song comes across. It changed the dynamics of the track, it changed the feel, it changed the overall texture and nature of the song, but it still didn't break the track. It allowed the track to continue on its path. It's a very dynamic track. It has a great bass line. The bass on this track is very predominant. It really comes out. You can really see it. You can, you, you can hear it. You can feel it. Perhaps not see it, but you can definitely feel it. So I love the bass on this track and I love the overall construction and what the solo did for this song. Last but not least, Blasphemy Divine, a pedal to the metal, the shortest track on this record and is relentless. You really feel like this track is just blowing by you with tons of speed, tons of momentum, tons of aggression, tons of intensity. The backing vocals add volume, it adds presence to the overall vocal tracks and I like that because it makes the song feel a lot more memorable. It's a short track, you need to pack as much intensity into it as possible. Adding the backing vocals definitely does that for this song. The solo on this track is outstanding. One of my favorite solos on this record comes with this song. I like what it does. It's really extended. For a song that's the shortest track on the record, the solo is really long when you compare the duration of the track and the duration of the solo. That surprised me. I was expecting the solo to be a lot more compact, a lot shorter, uh, but it wasn't. And it worked very well for the track. It made the track feel longer than what it was because of the duration of the solo. It added darkness, it actually added a little bit of atmosphere and it really worked well with the overall lyrical content of the track and overall how the song feels. It's a dark feeling kind of track so the solo kind of brought that uh, mood, that atmosphere into the forefront. It allowed it to come uh, and, and become a lot more noticeable once you go through the solo. But it's a song that has 
great movement. All elements uh, come across in a very robust, thick and heavy way. Drums, bass and guitars all working in the same direction with the same purpose. This is it, Evil Dead, United States of Anarchy, out October 30th on Steam Hammer. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below, I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.